Hello students, this is Corbin Vasile. Today I will be teaching you how to use the fan-made level development program Super Mario Bros. X2. For this episode, we'll be focusing on a few topics. How to make a level and level folder. How to navigate the base GUI upon opening the program. How to set up your section for building. How to place blocks, backgrounds, and NPCs how to use pipes and doors, how to place water and quicksand, how to place Mario and start a level, and what is required to finish the level. First up is section one, how to make a level and folder. First step to starting and saving your level is to open the program by using the icon in the folder that you downloaded in the link below in the description, or by clicking the icon if you've made a shortcut on your desktop like I have. Once you've clicked this, this window will open and what you have to do is click the Launch Editor button. Once the launcher is open, you will just have to close this Tip of the Day window, which will show you a few tips and tricks that will help you learn how to use the program, but we're not going to be focusing on that. And then go up to the upper left over here, you'll see a little piece of paper, click on that, and then click Level, and it will make your new level. Now to save your level and level folder, you just want to go back up to the upper left and click save, this little green floppy disk icon, or save icon really. Then this little pop-up will show up, and then you're going to name your level. So I'm going to name this TV Production Tutorial, and then click this little tick box to make a custom folder. And when you hit save, this little pop-up will show up, and I already have a, a little game that I've been working on called Unforgiving Festival. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to save it here. So, TV production tutorial dot level, and then just hit save. And then, if we open up the folder to where we saved it, we can see right here is we have my other levels, and then here we have the folder for TV production tutorial, and down here we have the level itself. So now you have saved your level and level folder. Uh, the level folder is mainly used for adding custom graphics, music, and uh, other things that would make your level more original rather than using the base stuff. But that's way more complicated and we're going to be using that in a later video if I decide to do one. You have now saved your level. Before we start building, we need to learn how the GUI works and look through the menus of the program so you can familiarize yourself on how to use it. So. Uh, first section is the toolbox, which is this little bit over here. This uh, big box of uh, tools that, I mean, technically that's a toolbar, but over here is the level item toolbox, which contains everything you're going to put in your level. It holds three tabs and two drop downs and a filter box. The three tabs are the blocks, BGO and NPC, BGO standing for background and NPC standing for non-player character, or basically any enemies or items you pick up in the game. And uh, these two little drop downs sort by group and category. If we sort by group, it will show each and every game that is uh, featured in Super Mario Bros. X 2. So you can choose miscellaneous, which is usually uh, extra monsters and things from other games that have been put into Super Mario Bros. X 2 to give its own little spin like Link from Legend of Zelda, uh, Rings from Sonic, uh, Bullies from Mario 64, and yada yada yada. And then you can go through the other games, Super Mario Bros. 2, 3, I just clicked the same one over again, 3, World, all these other stuff. And then you can set, sort by categories. So if I click this back to all, which it has every NPC from every game, and I go to category, this sorts by type of item like bonus which holds coins and rupees and rings and stopwatches and then there's also like bullets which are projectiles that you'll see like birdos, egg, hammers, a toothies which I've never seen before it's really interesting but anyway this sorts by everything you do and there's it's different for every single drop down like BGOs are backgrounds you can put them in the background behind the character to make it look more pretty and again you can sort by types of backgrounds or backgrounds from different games, and same with blocks. Uh, like you can sort by question mark bricks from all these different games, or you can narrow it down to a specific game with that. So now we only see 
the bricks from Super Mario Brothers. And uh, that's how that works. And then if there's something specific that you want to find, say if I want to see a uh, go to NPCs and want to find a bullet bill or a bill blaster, I can go up here and then type bill blaster and then here we go. I can place it in my stage. So next up is the toolbar up here at the top of the screen. Uh, this is very important uh, to building your level. And we're going to start off with the sections here. Sections are basically where you will place your levels. Basically, this here, which is, oh, I'm using the wrong keys. Also, you can use the arrow keys to scroll around the screen rather than going up here to this hand tool and dragging it around manually. But anyways, first up is the sections. And you can see these by little boxes marked with different numbers. And as you can see, if I change from here to here, it box moves places because they're different sections. I mean, let me give an example. For example, in Super Mario Bros. 1, you have the basic overworld colorful level with all the piranha plants, blocks, monsters, and then you'll go down into a pipe into a little underground section. The overworld with all the plants, blocks, and monsters and colors is section 1, and then that little underground area is section 2. So basically, it's uh, two different places, or three, or four, or five, or so on, that doors or pipes can connect you to. So. If you want to make your level really long, you can do as many sections as you like from one area to the next. For example, if I open up my level Mushroom Land 2, as you can see, you can open up multiple levels at once. You can see here I have my base level with these custom built graphics and such. Uh, and we can go from section to section. Like this is all of this is section 1. And then right here leads to section 2, which is a little bonus area, and section 3, 4. Five, six, and so on until you get to the star. So back to our level. That's just an example of how sections work. Then up here, these little buttons up here are pretty useful. So first, you'll see this little Mario icon with the number one next to it. This is how you place Mario uh, in your level. Click on him, and then it will hover there. Have a little shadow, and you click anywhere in your level where you want the player to start. That's how you place Mario on the level, but we're going to get that into that later. And the same thing with the number two, but that's for second player, because you can play split screen. And then there's uh, these two little buttons up here, which are important. So if you ever want to have water in your level, like you want just a little, a little area to have water, you just click on this little water button and then click and drag and make a selection. And now if Mario goes within this little green box, he will start swimming as if there's water, even though there's no background for water. And the same thing for this little orange one, which is quicksand. Much like water, uh, Mar if Mario touches it, it will act like he's sinking into quicksand and he will keep going until he reaches the bottom. And if he jumps, he'll slowly climb back up. And then there's these little locks. These are useful if you're trying to design like an underwater level. So you can lock water and quicksand. So we're basically, if you were to place these, and then you can see if I right click, I'll go back to my normal pointer tool, which is up here. I can click and drag these no matter where I click inside them. But if I go up here and lock it, now I can't I can't touch it. It will let me select over it and I can't move it. So then that's useful for when you are placing things inside a water area that you've already set. And it's the same thing for warps and doors, which are a different thing we're going to get into later. And then backgrounds, coins, and NPCs. Uh, sorry, not coins. NPCs and blocks. The little icon is a coin. I got myself confused. So. You can lock all of those to make sure you don't move around any of the blocks that you place. So if I place that and then lock the blocks, I can't move that. And then if I go into BGOs and grab this random bush block and place that and then lock BGOs, I can't pick that up. Think of the locks more like, kind of like Premiere Pro, where if we go here and we can lock these layers. So if we lock the audio, we can move around the video. And then if we lock the video, we can move around the audio. Anyways, that's the little lock buttons, but over here are your little menus, which are these things over here. So, normally, this is what it would look like if they're all activated. This little button opens your level objects, is, which is useful if you ever want to build anything in your level. And then this is the section settings. The section settings is useful if you want to set your background image, your music, or if you want to set your entire level to be underwater, so you don't have to constantly make a box of water over the entire thing every single section.
This next little button is the warps and doors menu. If you click this, it will open up over here. And this is how you make your pipes and your doors. So Mario goes down into the pipe or enters a door and goes to another section or another place in the current section that you're at. And we'll get into that later. And this one, uh, these two are the layers and events. Uh, Then these three are the layers, events, and uh, search, in which you can search items across your level section, or uh, do events or layers, but these are more complicated, so we're not going to get into those right now. Good job, now you know the important pieces of the GUI to make a simple level. More advanced things will be covered in a later video. Section 3, how to set up your section for building. So now that we have our level here, we need a background for Mario to jump around in, have a colorful world. So to do this, you're going to want to go to your section settings, which we just covered, which is this little stopwatch up here. And you want to click on this drop down, which is a black box uh, titled by background image. So you're going to move it up here so you can see all the drop down. And when you click it, you'll get this huge list of images, which is backgrounds from various Mario games and a few other games like uh, Metroid or Legend of Zelda. But for now, we're going to focus on the basic SMB3, Super Mario Bros. 3, blocks. And then as we click it, it will immediately show the background. And now, Mario wouldn't be Mario without some Mario music. So over here, uh, right above the background image, you can find the music dropdown, which right now it's set to silence. If you click that, it will drop down all the music from all the games. So what we're going to do for this level is just select SMW Overworld, which is Super Mario World Overworld. So now that we have our background and music set, let's start placing some blocks. So over here in the level item toolbox, if we want to start off with some ground, we're going to want to go to the blocks category. And obviously this is a lot of stuff to go off of. So let's start off with a normal grass uh, world as this is a grass world background to fit the background. We'll hit the category drop down and find grass and ground one and two. I'm gonna go with the Super Mario World, so I'm gonna hit the normal uh, grass and ground one, which is the grass from Super Mario World. And it's simple tile placing like Mario Maker or RPG Maker, all that stuff. But this is more specific. Unlike Mario Maker, if you click it and bring it out here and try to piece it all together, it will look like that, which is no good. So we're gonna hit this top block, and then you can use, the, once again, you can use the arrow keys to move around, but only when you're clicked into this box. So I'm gonna place a piece, and now I can move around with the arrow keys. So I'm gonna use the arrow keys to kind of make a level, and each one has their own corner, so I can like click this 25 degree slope up to the left, and then click there. And if I right click, I deselect that, so now I'm just back to a normal cursor. And then there's each there's a slope for each one. So if I nor put a normal corner uh, block right here, that wouldn't look right. And if I put one of these corners here, it still wouldn't look right. So that's how the slopes work. There's only one specific slope for this, which works like that. So you can see now that fits a lot better. So basically, you're just going to want to keep going with these tiles. And if I want to make like a 90 degree angle like that, I use the corner. See so now that connects, and I'm just going to keep building until I'm done with my basic ground. But you see, oh well, the level's so small. I don't want my level to be this short. I, you saw in this other level that it was super, super large. It goes on forever. So how do you do this? So if you want to do that, you go up here and hit resize section, and now everything will turn green, and you get this green little box. And just try to leave that there. Don't, don't do what I did. And you just have to go up to the edges like this and your cursor will turn gold in which it's telling you that you are uh, resizing the section. So you can go up to the edge or the corners. If you go up to this edge, you can expand it horizontally. And then if you go up to this edge, you can expand it vertically. Or if you want to expand both, you can go into these corners and go up and right, uh, down and right, and uh, uh, left and so on so we're just gonna make this a little longer I got about another screen and I'm gonna con uh, continue designing my ground real fast so I'll be right back when I'm done with that well it seems that I've forgotten to unmute my mic during this section so this is voice over me from the future and uh, as you can see I was designing my level and here if you want to uh, 
fill this in without having to place brick by brick, you can go up here to the top, which has the paint bucket, and use the paint bucket tool to fill it in completely. As you can see, I'm uh, grabbing it now, and you'll see the block you can use in the shadow, and then click in an area, and it will fill it up. But be careful with this tool, because if there's one simple block missing, and then you hit the fill tool, it will cover the entire screen. And remember, if you want to undo a change, just uh, do Control-Z. So, now that I've filled in uh, these sections, I have three little platforms to jump across. And the next step is to add blocks and things to hit and items to collect. So. I'm going to go over here to uh, the blocks drop down and choose question mark bricks, uh, question mark blocks and bricks, and I'll uh, place a few down. So when you click one, uh, you'll get an item properties window, which will show up right now. And uh, you'll see it has a few different things you can check, which is uh, invisible or slippery, in which you can make them invisible or slippery. And when you place it normally, it defaults to a coin. So if you want to change that, all you have to do is to hit that little button that says one coin and then this menu will pop up and as you can see everything to the left is gray and we can't select it uh, but we can change the number of coins that is in there so if we want to change to use items all we have to do is hit this bot a little tick above and uh, everything will become colorful and you can select all those items so we're gonna add a super mushroom so we're gonna scroll up to the top here and hit that super mushroom and hit OK so now there's a mushroom in the box, and if we place it right there, you can see that there's a little shadow of a mushroom. And if we want to delete this block, we just click on it and hit the delete key on our keyboard. And just we can click and drag this around, find a nice place for it up there. Add some blocks around it, which default as empty, so you can add coins to that if you like. But I'm just going to leave these as empty and then make one extra that has 10 coins in it. So now that I've placed these bricks, I'm going to place a few more around, so we'll be right back after that. Alright, so now that we got some blocks in, we're going to want to add some enemies for Mario to fight, like uh, Goombas or Koopas, things to jump on and jump over, that kind of stuff. So to do that, we're going to go to the NPC tab over to the left of the screen. And if we want to narrow it down to enemies, I should hit the category and then go down to enemy. And these are all the enemies in all the games. And again, if you want to narrow it down, you can just change that group drop down. But for now, I'm just going to narrow it down to Super Mario Bros. 3 and find a Goomba. And when you change uh, the group, it will reset the category to all. So just make sure if you want to go back to enemies that you set that thing to enemy. So now that we have the Goomba selected, each uh, item has its own item properties. And by default, the enemy you place will go left. If you set it to random, it will go left or right. And if you set it to right, it will move right when it is loaded onto the screen. You can also set uh, monsters to have talk messages. Almost anything that is an NPC can have a talk message. But if they are enemies, they have to be set to friendly in which they cannot hurt the player to talk to them. Or else uh, you'll just kill it or it will kill you. So we're just going to place the Goomba in the stage without a message. Uh, two of them going left, and then we're going to select a Koopa and put that right there. And so they can hop down. And then I'll place a few more throughout the stage real fast. If I want to place some, like, some piranha plants or something, you can also change categories as I said and you can find uh, the pipes category which holds all the pipes from all the games etc and I'll uh, put that in here for piranha plants to pop out of to attack our plumber now that we have some enemies and blocks set down into our level we can now place some backgrounds to make it even prettier to place BGOs just hit the BGO tab and you'll see all the BGOs and normally the, the good ones are right here at the top or you can go into the category and select which one you want to, which greens, which shows all the greens. So 
this is probably better. So I'm just gonna sprinkle them out. You can just do it normally how you place these and it'll show a shadow of where you're gonna put them. So I'm gonna put a bush right there and they'll always be behind it. And uh, whatever you place next will be on top of what you put. So if I pick this up and place that, like, oh, whoops. It will always be behind it now. So I'm gonna place some backgrounds around my level and I'll be right back. Now you can see adding a few small backgrounds like some grass or some hills makes it a lot more beautiful. You can see it looks a lot more like real land instead of like an empty landscape. It, it shows it's got some depth between this background and the far background image. And it makes it a lot more pretty. So now that we've got our level set up, uh, let's uh, put some bonuses in actually. Uh, so we put in some enemies, but let's put in some coins for Mario to collect. So I'm just going to do this real fast while recording. Put a few coins right here. Um, points right there. Um, put some right here and then some right here so now we have some coins in here where are we gonna put Mario as I said earlier you're just gonna want to hit this Mario button and uh, find a place and we're gonna put them right down here so now that we have Mario in our level uh, let's actually put some water and quicksand in here too to show you how that works so Say we want to put water here and quicksand here, just in these little open areas. So for water, you can also you can obviously just put this here. But as you can obviously see, let's just put Mario here to test it. And also you can hit F5 at any time to test your level, but it usually won't work unless you've saved your level. And the first time this little box loads up, it's going to take a few seconds for it to load up. But basically, we put some water there, but obviously if we go into the game here, we can see that there's no water, but if we fall down here, it treats it as water. Also, the controls for this, uh, use the arrow keys to move left or right, and then uh, down crouches, but you can't do that when you're small Mario. Hold the letter X while moving to run, or you can use X to use your ability, and then the letter Z to jump. So, these are the controls of how to play. And as you can see, we have our little monsters moving. They're all going around, and just jump on them. And then you can also hold X and walk to the side of a shell to pick it up. And yeah, so that's how that works. And we take out that. Oh, I missed. Okay. So you can see there's water here, but we don't visually see it. No one would know that there's water there. And then we just don't have quicksand here, so we're just going to die. But uh, if we want to put quicksand and water here, well, first we're going to delete this. And we're going to go to the BGOs, hit the drop down, and then select water. So we can see we have water graphics here, and I'm gonna place this kind of water. So I'm just gonna place that there, and then grab this under uh, water part, and fill that in. And now that we have that selected, we can go to the water tool, and then click at the edge and drag down here. So now if we jump in, it loads much faster the second time, we can jump into the water and it acts like water, still. And then the same with sand. I'll make that real quick. Place some quicksand in here. And then bottom, fill that in. And then select quicksand and fill that in. Alright, if we start the level, it acts like quicksand. And you can't move much, but you can jump out. And that's how quicksand and water works. So now we have Mario here, he's set up at the beginning, but this level is pretty short. We want more places to go. And to do that, we're going to go up to the sections and hit section 4, because I accidentally hit section 3 earlier. And as you can see, it's a whole new area, section 3, section 4. And uh, this room is just going to be where he's going to collect the stars, so I'm going to set this up real quick as a new level. Alright, now we have this room set up and uh, a place for Mario to leave the level and we're going to place a star here later, but how will Mario get from here to here? If we place Mario right here next to the pipe, let's bring him up a little. If you place him in the ground, he will immediately die, so be careful of that. So if you hit F5 and we jump on the pipe, it the button is not working. We can't go down into the pipe. 
so that's a problem. But we need to get into warps and doors, as I had mentioned previously. Warps and doors are actually pretty easy, even though it looks a little intimidating. But all we have to do is hit the plus button, and we make a new warp, and it shows all the stuff. But ignore this stuff, and uh, and that this stuff, the layer and the stars needed. Just focus on this drop down, the, the entrance and exits, and the way you're entrancing. So when it's a door, you don't need an, uh, the direction you're moving into it because it's not a pipe. So if I had the arrow going up, Mario would go up into a pipe and then exit down out of a pipe. But this is set to door. So first we need to set it to pipe, which is number one. And now these light up. So the entrance of this pipe is going to be down because Mario is going to be going down into the pipe. And then the exit is going to be up here, so which is going to set it up because Mario's going to come up out of this pipe. So now that we have those uh, directions set, we're just going to set the entrance and exit. So when we set entrance, this little pink block will appear and you're just going to move it right over there and then click it. And then go over here and then click exit and then click right there. So now when Mario hits down here, he'll come out here. But if he tries to hit down here, he will not come back. To do that, you need to make another one. Set it to pipe. And then entrance there, which is going to be down. And exit here, which is going to be up. So now it's two way. So now Mario can enter there and exit there. So now that we have the warp set up, so we can go to this extra section, we need Mario to be able to leave the level. Uh, or else he's trapped in here forever and he can't do anything. Just trapped in this level with these constant enemies and water and quicksand. So for Mario to get out, we need an exit point, And there's a few of those. So if we go to NPCs and then hit all and then go to exit point, we have these different exit points from the different game. There's the goal tape, which scrolls up and down that thing from Super Mario World. Uh, the checkpoint, which is useful if you want to set a midpoint throughout your level, so if you die, you start there instead of at the very beginning. Crystal Ball and Magic Ball, which are from Super Mario Bros. 2 and Super Mario Bros. 3. But the best way to do it is to do stars. Power stars, if you're going to make a full game, like I was in Mushroom Land 2. Uh, stars you can use to unlock other levels and such, and it's one of the easiest ways to just end the level. So if we hit Power Star Exit, if you hit Power Star Collectible, Mario will grab the star and it will add to the star counter, but he will not exit the level. So make sure to hit power star exit. And we're going to place this star right there. So then now Mario has a way to exit the level. So, congratulations, you finally made your first Super Mario Bros. X2 level. Uh, we made some sections, we made some warps and doors, and some, uh, set some section settings. And uh, now let's test it. As I said before, uh, whenever you want to test a level, uh, all you have to do is click F5 or you can go up here to the test tab and then go to Luna Tester and hit run testing which has the hot key of F5. Now Mario will load into the level and we got all this stuff here. Jump on the enemies, have some fun, and just get to the end of the level. Ah. It's also good to test while you're developing to make sure all of your levels are possible. And now, here we are at the end. And that's how you make your own Super Mario Bros. X level. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope it came to some use for you guys. So, uh, I hope you use this program in the future. It's super fun and way has way more stuff than Mario Maker. I'll see you guys later, and have a good day.